Hey, I'm Jun Brotzet, the architect of Vespa.ai, and I'll be talking about fast and scalable evaluation of machine learned models, especially over large data sets. Uh, many of you probably know, but uh, if not, there's an ongoing revolution happening in search, aka search 2.0, where people are moving from text tokens and token based retrieval plus relevance using typically a fairly small set of scalar features and gradient boosted trees for machine, machine learning for relevance to embedding both the queries and the documents in a vector space and doing retrieval by nearest neighbor in this vector space. And then doing relevance typically using some variant of deep neural nets which means using large tensors with maybe thousands or millions of uh, features. Mm -hmm. um, in addition to this change happening in search, this technology on the uh, right, the vector embeddings and so on, is also used in another set of areas that are using typically the same technologies, such as recommendation, personalization, ad targeting, and so on. So while there are good technologies for each of these pieces that you want to put together to make a solution on the right, uh, it's hard to productionize it, as I'll talk about in a minute. So the pieces are typically some kind of search engine and library for doing approximate nearest neighbor search and some kind of model server or library for evaluating these uh, deep neural nets, right? So each of these pieces are good. And if you're doing uh, submitting to a Kaggle competition or something like that, it's quite easy to put this together and make it work for your submission. And um, that's it, right? But when you want to productionize it, you run into a bunch of challenges. Uh, combining these things with good performance is challenging. In practice, if you're doing a production solution, you typically want to combine nearest neighbor search with the query filters because real solutions typically have filters. For example, if you are um, searching for new news articles, you want to filter out some publications for some customers or some languages or countries or something like that. Um, and all kinds of solutions have similar business needs, right? And in addition, while this revolution is ongoing and uh, text embeddings and so on are becoming better, typically you get good results only by combining these embedding techniques with traditional text search, BM25 and so on. So you need some kind of hybrid where you do uh, typically do text matching based on the uh, both neural nets and the traditional text search and combine features of both and return that and that gives you the best results, right? Um, so how do you combine these things, right? You need to do the text search or the search or filters in some way in a search engine and then use uh, nearest neighbor library to search for the nearest neighbors and then you need to combine the results somehow. If you just do that naively, it will be very expensive because you're doing two different searches that may give you completely disjunct results and then you need to combine them somehow. And also, how do you know that you're asking for enough to actually be able to combine these into single results? That's another hard problem, right? If you if your filters filters out 99% of all the documents, then you probably won't find enough matches in your uh, nearest neighbor search to even return a result, right? So this is a hard problem. Uh, and productionizing it is also challenging because in a production service, you need things like sustained real time updates, including removal of documents and so on which these libraries typically don't do very well. 
but that doesn't matter for competitions and so on, but it matters a lot for real production systems. And you also need reasonably fast restart times. So the, the libraries that are only doing this stuff in memory and not persisting uh, won't really work well in practice. Right? Uh, some of them do and some of them don't. Um, if you are, have disjunct systems for this and you um, update them separately, then you also need to deal with the case where the update succeeds in one and not the other and they diverge over time and so on. Lastly, scaling these solutions is also pretty difficult. Um, what this means is um, when you scale to more data or more CPU per query, you need to partition your content and spread it over many nodes, right? Um, now you have the problem that you can't really run the model inference that you want to do on a subset of uh, your results on a different node because that will quickly saturate your uh, network. For example, if you have a 10 uh, GB network, uh, then you can only do 1000 docs per query if you have vectors with 500 floats. Um, if you do that, your total capacity will be 300 queries per second. And adding more nodes won't help because you saturate the uh, network uh, backbone. Um, so model servers won't really help you anymore. So you need some kind of lower le level inference library that you need to integrate on all of the content partitions, which is a lot more work and more challenging. Right? Um, you have the same kind of problem with uh, approximate nearest neighbor uh, integration. So how do you solve all this? Well, one way to do it is to just use Vespa AI, which is a open source platform that supports all of these things out of the box. Um, it started as a web search engine uh, a long time ago. So it has all the traditional text search features, text-based relevance with positions, linguistics, stemming, and so on, BM25, uh, weak and operator which is important for um, scaling text search over tokens uh, optimized support for gradient decision trees uh, text snippeting that you want to do in text search and so on but it also has support for nearest neighbor search and approximate nearest neighbor search in vector spaces uh, support for adding tensor data to your documents and queries and doing Tensor Mathematics, uh, integration with ONX and TensorFlow to import complex machine learning models directly and running them on the content nodes. So you get this scaling I just talked about uh, for free. And you can combine all these features in a single query and in a single relevance model. So you can get the best of both worlds and experiment and so on with these different features. And lastly, it's for high availability production systems. So you can change the hardware, change the machine learning models, change the data and logic and so on while you're serving and writing without uh, interruption. And these systems are, uh, I mean, Vespa is built to scale to hundreds of billions of documents, hundreds of thousands of queries per second and can typically do couple of tens of thousands of writes per node per second sustained. And that includes writes that remove documents, change fields, uh, all of these things. So I won't be talking too much about Vespa itself, but mention some of its usages so that you are, can be assured it's a real production system. Um, use it extensively at the company that employs me with this, which is Verizon Media. Um, you're serving over a billion users uh, with Vespa, about 350,000 queries per second. Um, and some of the use cases are delivering personalized uh, content to all the users that visit the Yahoo pages uh, and so on which means evaluating a bunch of um, 
while doing all the things I just talked about, uh, really, where you map the user to a vector space and um, do a vector search to come up with the best articles and then run machine learn models to fine tune what you're returning and so on. And we do that for every user that is visiting one of these sites in real time when they are uh, loading the page. And we are doing uh, the same kind of thing on the ad network owned by the company, which is the third largest in the world, um, where we're doing similar things, but even more complex because you take bidding into account and so on. And all of that runs on Vespa and is serving in real time. Um, so just a quick overview of uh, Vespa is a two-tier system. You have a stateless Java container on top that handles the incoming queries and writes and so on. Or you can have multiple different um, container clusters, if you like. Uh, below that, you have content clusters that stores the actual contents, uh, maintain reverse indices for text, uh, indices for uh, vector nearest neighbor searching and so on and which is doing all the distributed query execution including finding the matches evaluating machine learning models and so on because these systems can contain on many nodes many processes and so on we also have an administration and config uh, cluster that uh, sets up and manages these nodes for you and what the user is seeing is a more high level abstraction which we call an application package which i'll show you an example of later the application package basically describes the system that you want to run and contains any java components that you want to run the machine learn models uh, and so on and when you work with the application you just change the application package and deploy it and the system will safely carry out the change from the currently running system to uh, the system described by the new version of the application package. So we typically do this in a CD fashion where you just where you have a process that pulls from GitHub or whatever you're using, building your application package and just submitting it to this and it will um, roll it out safely in production. So how does approximate nearest neighbor searches work on Vespa? Uh, for the user, it's just another query item that you can combine with any others in the query tree. So you can combine text search and nearest neighbor in the same query and even have multiple nearest neighbor operators or different fields or whatever in the same uh, query. Uh, the approximate nearest neighbor implementation we use is based on the HN SV algorithm, which is a network algorithm, which is the fastest algorithms uh, generally. Um, we have our own implementation that delivers the, on the needs I talked about earlier, like supporting removal of nodes uh, from the graph uh, and so on. Um, and it also works efficiently with other uh, query terms so you can combine it with the filters and so on and still do an efficient approximate nearest neighbor search. How does model inference work in Vespa? So Vespa has a tensor data model where you can add tensors um, to both documents and queries and the application package. Um, so a tensor is just a multi-dimensional collection of numbers. Uh, each of the dimensions can be sparse or dense, and you can combine sparse and dense dimensions in the same tensor. As I show an example over here, where you have a two-dimensional tensor with uh, a sparse key and a dense vector. So it's really a map of vectors, right? Um, then you can do tensor math to express machine learned models or business logic over these tensors. Um, there's a small set of core operations which we use in our tensor engine for uh, optimization. And then we have a larger set of higher level uh, functions, which are the ones you will typically use in your models, but which maps to those primitive functions that we have join and map and so on 
which is quite neat, but not that interesting for users, I get you just use the high level uh, methods. Or if you don't want to write your expressions by hand, you can just deploy TensorFlow or ONX or XGBoost or Light GBM models directly uh, in Vespa. And Vespa will do the translation automatically when you deploy the model. So we have our own Tensor execution engine inside Vespa that is optimized for repeated execution of the models or many data items, which is what you typically want to do in these kind of systems, right? You're not just evaluating over a single data point per query, but you're evaluating over many data points, articles or movies or whatever it is. And just to show a quick example of the hybrid model thing I talked about earlier, what we see um, really almost every time when we look at uh, uh, the performance we get out of these various models is that um, you don't get the best models by using either uh, some traditional text uh, features or by using uh, a neural net model, but you get the very best performance by combining both. And here's a very simple example here where we have uh, some traditional text features here in one we call rank profile and another rank profile which is just um, the distance in a vector space for this embedding and then we have a hybrid model which is just the sum of both things and that outperforms the other two so it's a very simple example because it's from a, a one of our sample applications but it illustrates these points so I'm going to go through another example application a bit more uh, in depth. And I've chosen to the application that we call core19.vespa.ai. Um, when the pandem pandemic broke out, the Allen Institute uh, released a data set of initially 40,000 and now about 130,000 uh, papers about the coronavirus, at least related to coronavirus somehow. Um, and my team turned around to take a week or two out to build a tool to help exploring this data set so that researchers could more quickly do science to learn about the new disease, which seemed like an important thing to do at the time. Uh, so this combined te traditional text search features with article similarity search and also grouping and filtering, uh, which is something you typically want to do when you do exploration. And here everything is open, both the data set and also the Vespa itself, but also the Vespa application that uh, incorporates that implements the Core 19 uh, application, as well as the front end that we built on top. Uh, so that's the advantage of this. It's an open data set and everything is open source. The disadvantage is that the data set is uh, very small, just 100,000, 130,000 articles. But Vespa scales to about a million times as much uh, content. Uh, without really changing anything other than adding more nodes because you need more resources for that, obviously. So let me exit the presentation and show you the Core 19 application, how it works. So this is the front page. Uh, here you can write a query uh, as you would expect, but I'll just click on uh, one of these now. Um, this one, for example, so this is a rather complex uh, query and you get results as you would expect. And here you see all the matches that you get in various uh, sources, journals, uh, and so on. So this is a grouping feature uh, in Vespa. And then you can also do search for similar articles here. And what we're doing then is um, uh, adding this related to term to the query, which is just picked up by a custom uh, Java component in this application that fetches that article from Vespa, uh, 
fetches the embedding vector of that article and then adds that embedding vector uh, to the query that is then sent down to get combination of the text features that you added in the query here to a nearest neighbor search uh, over that article. So you get the combination of both and that's very useful when you are exploring, right? Because you have an article that represents somehow the topic you're interested in and then you combine that with um, text search features that more precisely expresses conditions on what you're interested in, right? You can also enter the article uh, itself, which is just served from Vespa as well. And here you can also do a similar article search by different embedding vectors that are provided, uh, things like that. Okay, so how is this implemented? Let's go into it a bit more um, in detail. So this is the GitHub repo for uh, the front end, and we have a separate repo for the back end, which is oh sorry, wrong link for the for the Vespa application, which is the an example of an application package which I mentioned uh, before. So this is the repo for the. Vespa application. I'll go through what it contains, but first uh, I have it checked out here. Um, so I checked out uh, this repo and go to source, and here you can see the size of the whole thing. So it's uh, it contains a light GBM model that we have been experimenting with. So there's that's a lot of lines of codes, but of, of course auto generated by that machine learning but apart from that it's just about 600 lines of code implementing this entire uh, core 19 application which will scale to any size you want and you can combine um, um, vector similarity and text search snippeting grouping and aggregation and all of these things so let's look at what it actually contains so you have the application itself which basically contains these two files a services file which is describes the clusters that you want to run in this case we run one of these stateless java container clusters and one content cluster that holds the content in the container cluster we have some custom Java components, which we'll take a quick look at later. And then we just specify uh, the resources that this cluster should run on. This runs on the public uh, Vespa cloud. And then we can just specify the resources we will have and deploy it. And the system will uh, get those resources on uh, AVS and run it. In this case, we just specify the re the sources of each node and then we say we want from four, two to four nodes depending on the load we are seeing. For the content cluster, we there's some a little bit of tuning here and also tuning all the snippets. And apart from that, we just reference the single schema that we use for the documents and again specifying the resources and that's it. And then we have a deployment XML which specifies where this should run, and this just runs in a single AVS uh, region. If you are self-hosting Vespa, it's really the same thing, but instead of saying this, you just list the actual hosts that you want to run for this cluster uh, here. That's the only difference. And then you don't need the deployment XML file. So what else is here? There's the machine learned light GBM model and some certificates and a specification of um, the stuff you can send in the query which is these embedding vectors um, and then there's the single schema that we use that describes the data we have here which is a single 
type representing the scholarly article itself. So it has a bunch of fields as you would expect with the title, the content itself, the citations and whatnot. And in addition, some embedding vectors. So we have an embedding vector for um, the abstract for the title, and then we have another embedding vector which is supplied by the Allen Institute team, which is called a spectrum embedding. And those are all single dimension dense tensors. Uh, the scheme also describes how we can rank or alternatively evaluate machine learning models uh, or this kind of data, which is what we call a rank profile. So there's a bunch of those here. I won't go into them in detail, but there's one that just do normal text features, one that use BM25, which is also with the normal text features. And then we have one that references the, that uses the light GBM uh, model. And this could also be combined with other features and expressions and tensors and whatnot, because all of this is just math, as you can see here, right? You could say plus the light GBM model here or whatever. We also have some models that are used for the related searchers where um, we just access what we call the raw score or this uh, embedded vector nearest neighbor search, which will return a distance. And that's really all you need to create an application. In addition, we have some uh, custom Java code here to implement the stuff I mentioned around um, searching for um related articles so we call these components that can intercept the query and or the result a searcher they just implement a single method which is um, the search method which gets the query and returns the results in this case it's just looking to see if there is one of these related to items in a query if not it just uh, returns which means it does nothing and you have a normal search. Otherwise, it's translating that related to item to the approximate nearest neighbor uh, operator, which is in a subclass. Let's take a quick look at that as well. Um, here we can see that. As you can see, it's just to new a nearest neighbor item. Here, we don't appro allow approximate uh, nearest neighbor because the data set is so small. So that's the only thing you would change other than adding resources. If you wanted to scale to a billion documents, you would definitely set a low approximate true. But other than that, everything uh, would be the same. Um, the add the great and then item method is used uh, up here where we combine it with the other items in a query. And here you can also see an example where we create um, two and then nearest neighbor items and combine them with or uh, to search ne for nearest neighbors, both in the abstract and the title. So things like that you can do freely and it just works. Okay. so. That's all I really wanted to cover, and that's really all there is in this application. You can easily check this out uh, yourself if you go to github.com Vespa Engine sample applications. You can find it there. Um, or just go to Core 19 and click the open source um, uh, link on top. Okay, so to wrap up, Vector-based retrieval and tensor-based relevance, which is one way to look at uh, these deep neural networks, at least when you want to just do inference, is emerging as an alternative to traditional search and is also already the state of art for 
recommendation, personalization, ad targeting, and so on. But productionizing these methods on your own, even though there are good tools for each of the pieces, it's hard to combine them to a production quality system that is as good performance in all cases and sustain good performance as you make changes. Um, and that you can combine with filtering and traditional search and so on, and which also is operable and scalable. So if you don't want to do all that work, you can just try out Vespa.ai, which provides all of it in a single uh, integrated solution with better performance than you would get, for sure, by combining these pieces on your own. And you can find Vespa at uh, Vespa.ai. So that's all. Then we can switch to live and take questions. So thanks, John, for the great presentation. The Cord 19 seems uh, so it seems super useful. So all the best with that, uh, guys. We still have a couple of minutes. If you have any questions, please ask them on the Slack channel. I guess John, you already provided the link to the GitHub site. Uh, do you maybe while we are waiting, do you have any further feedback on how you plan to evolve Vespa or what's the roadmap? Uh, so where we are spending most of our efforts right now really is on the cloud service for all the um, um, applications that are using it in my company, uh, we provide a cloud service and we just were recently started providing that cloud service to external uh, customers as well. So we are mostly focusing on uh, making that more broadly available and adding more features for, you know, making it cheaper to run and things like that. We do seem to have one question. The question is uh, from Edward. It's basically, uh, oh, sorry. Okay, so there's one more before from Maya. She would like to understand how can we build vector embeddings for articles? I guess it's more like, how can you add them? Yeah, yeah I, I think maybe the question is how to come up with the vectors. So that's the machine learning part really. and. Uh, that's uh, somebody else's problem as far as we're concerned. We just make it fast to uh, retrieve them and compute with them once you uh, have created the vectors, but how you create the embeddings, that's uh, the machine learning part, which uh, typically happens outside Vespa. Okay, good. Uh, we have another question. So it's basically from Edward, and he's asking if he, so how, so does the Vespa architecture allow plugging new uh, artificial neural network algorithms? So basically how extensible is the architecture? Um, so the, so the tensor language we have allows you to express uh, pretty much all the models uh, I've seen recently, so we had to, when people came up with BERT type models, transformer models with lots of matrix and so on, we had to extend the tensor math language a bit. But apart from that, it should handle all kinds of models uh, you would come up with, um, with what we have there already, because the core operations that I mentioned, like map and reduce and so on, are very in general, so you can pretty much implement uh, all kinds of computations over tensors uh, on top of them. And I think there was one more question as well. Yeah, so actually I think Edward has a follow-up question. Uh, I'm not sure I understand all the, uh, let's oh, yeah, see, the yeah. Yeah, but you see it as well, maybe if you can. Yeah. Yeah. If we can plug in other uh, near, approximate nearest neighbor search algorithms into Vespa, no, you cannot, not without lots and lots of work. It's basically what we have been doing for about six months now. It's to 
plug in one algorithm for this into Vespa, which means implementing it in C++ so that it works for uh, with the rest of the engine and supports all the operations that we need to support with uh, high throughput, including removal of uh, documents and so on. And most of these algorithms don't handle this very well, so I, I don't think it will work well for production to plug something in. You need to implement it from scratch with all these requirements taken into account, if it's more than for experimenting. But I think we have cho chosen the right algorithm for this now, so I don't think there's a great need to plug in something else, uh, to be honest. Right, uh, and there's another question by Maya, uh, also related to embeddings and text retrieval features. I think you part of answered that, if maybe if you just want to comment a bit more. Yeah. So there's like, do, yeah, do you include them in a single model, she's asking. Yeah, so combining embeddings with text retrieval features, there's two parts to it, right? One is the retrieval. You want to retrieve both the nearest neighbors to some vector, but you also want to retrieve the documents that are not near neighbors, but are matching the same uh, tokens. So we want to retrieve a mix of both. And that's sort of logically easy, but difficult to do uh, efficiently because uh, when you want to do it efficiently, you want to evaluate both things in parallel, really, and taking filters into account and so on. So that's another reason why you need to integrate this deep into engine to make it really efficient. But we have done that. So when you're using it, it's just you create the nearest neighbor item or several items in a query tree, and you can just combine it with and and or and so on with uh, text items. And the other part is relevance. and. As you saw there in one model that we actually good, got pretty good uh, results from, we just added together the uh, um, closeness in vector space with some uh, simple um, text features. So features like BM25 or whatever, and just add them together, probably a weighted sum. It's fine. So do you have this benchmarking result somewhere or is it? Yeah, we do. Um, yeah, it's part of a sample application that we uh, provide, so you can run the whole thing yourself. Uh, actually, if you look in the parent directory of the thing I shared earlier, you'll find all the sample applications with benchmarks and so on. Super. Uh, great. I don't think it, uh, I don't see any other questions. So thanks again, John. And uh, so everyone, we can, of course, continue the discussion in the breakout channel. So basically, the VBuzz too. And uh, yeah, thanks again for the presentation and have a nice evening. Thanks.